continue with the trial. Uh, do you have any witnesses you wish to call? Yeah, yes, sir. We call Officer Jeff Sagan. Officer, if you would, raise your right hand. You swear or affirm to tell the truth, whole truth, and nothing but truth, and affirm to perjury. You may have a seat. We're ready. Officer, would you go ahead and tell the jury your name, please? Gerald Sally. And you're employed with the Richmond Police Department? That's correct. And you were employed with the Richmond Police Department on September 28th of 2019, correct? That's correct. What is your position with the Richmond Police Department? I currently serve as a detective uh, with the Richmond Police Department. Okay. I'm and sorry, could, could you speak up? I'm, I'm unable to hear you. I currently serve as a detective for the Richmond Police Department. Can you hear it? A little bit better now. Is his microphone turned on, Your Honor? Should be on. Can you all picking it up? I apologize. I just... No, I... No, I understand, and obviously we want you to speak. You're soft here. We want to make sure the defense counsel can hear you, and you also want to make sure the jury can hear you. Yes. So are you, are you all also having trouble hearing him? Does he need to speak up? Just a little bit. A little bit? Okay. That's me. Shout it out. Okay. <laughs> so what was your position with Richmond Police Department on September the 28th, 2019? I was assigned to patrol at the, that, that time. And how long in total have you been employed with the Richmond Police Department? Approximately five and a half years. Okay. And if you would give the jury a uh, summary of what training you have to go undergo to become a uh, certified law enforcement officer with the Richmond Police Department. I attended uh, the basic training academy at uh, DOCJT. Um, it was a 23-week academy. Um, we're taught numerous things there. Uh, to become a uh, basic uh, law enforcement officer uh, and then after that you receive advanced training outside of uh, the basic training academy. Okay and can you describe what that advanced training is please? Um, it, it can vary um, kind of whether that be the photographing, uh, whether that would be uh, roadside impairment uh, detection, uh, you know, drug recognition expert training, there's homicide training, it just varies uh, to uh, your field and the, the training. Okay, and what specialized training do you specifically have or certifications do you have? Uh, numerous. Um, and, well, let me ask you, as it relates to enforcement of uh, driving while intoxicated or driving? Uh, I've attended uh, A-Rod, uh, which is a advanced roadside. Uh, you know, enforcement detection, um, and then I also have attended uh, DRE school, which uh, stands for Drug Re Recognition Expert and uh, Identifying Impaired Individuals. Okay. On the, on the a right training, how, how long is that training and what does it focus on? It's a 16-hour course. Uh, it focuses on um, detecting drug impairment in individuals. Okay. Um, and do you have any type of training when it comes to uh, field sobriety uh, training or uh, conducting field sobriety exercises? Yes, sir. Okay, can you tell the jury what that is? Uh, upon uh, part of the, my training in the academy is to, to do the standardized field sobriety tests. Um, those are part of the, the tests that were conducted uh, in this case as well as uh, the AROC uh, course that I attended uh, where they teach you to do further uh, divided attention tests and uh, another eye exam called lack of convergence. Okay. Now, getting to the facts of this case, can you tell the jury on September 28, 2019, how did you come into contact with the defendant, Timothy Dotson? I was sitting stationary at a gas station at the intersection of Barnes Mill and Lancaster uh, and I observed his vehicle um, headed southbound on Lancaster. Um, he failed to make a uh, abrupt lane change or he failed to make his turn signal uh, and made an abrupt lane change. Uh, he was in the left lane. Uh, he turned into the right lane um, without signaling uh, and nearly uh, collided with the vehicle that was in front of him. Okay. Now let me back up just a little bit. 
What specifically had you at the gas station on the corner of <coughs> Lancaster and Barnes Mill that night? Why were you there? There was a traffic safety checkpoint um, between Barnes Mill, uh, or Lancaster and Barnes Mill, and Lancaster and the Eastern Bypass. Okay. And so was your job there to be part of that uh, traffic safety checkpoint, or were you doing other work at the gas station? I was part of that. Part of that. Okay. So what were you looking for while you were at the gas station, and what was your role in that traffic uh, checkpoint? Adverse reactions to the checkpoint. Uh, if there was any unsafe uh, maneuvers by any vehicles, uh, to stop and speak with those individuals if they did um, uh, uh, make a traffic infraction, uh, and to see you know what caused that, whether that be impairment uh, or something else. Okay. So in relation to where you were at in the gas station parking lot, and you said south, my understanding is, is that Mr. Dotson was traveling from what I would call Main Street back toward the bypass, is that correct? Yes sir, that's correct. I don't know south or north, but he was going that way, correct, toward the bypass? That's correct. Um, when did you first observe his vehicle from your location? Uh, Probably right before he came to uh, to the intersection. Um, it's hard to describe, um, but it would be much before the intersection, uh, just due to the field of view and the, I, I believe there's a fence there. What uh, once you saw him almost strike the other vehicle? What action did you take? I put my vehicle in drive, um, turned my headlights on, and proceeded to start to pull out. Um, I made sure Mr. Dawson uh, passed by me, and then that's when he's observed going on to Eastway. Okay. Now, e Eastway, if you're going up Lancaster, that would be a side road to the right, correct? That's correct. About across from where uh, EKU Model School is at, or that section, correct? Yes, sir. Um, did you initiate your uh, lights, your emergency lights, on Lancaster, or once he was on Eastway? I think it was as we um, entered into Eastway. I don't think I had initiated it on Lancaster just yet. Did he avoid the checkpoint by turning on the Eastway? Your Honor, I would object to the form of that question. The witness is on direct examination, and the Commonwealth is only permitted to ask you what we're going to how questions. That seemed to me like he's trying to leave the witness. And I'll sustain rephrase. Okay. Did the defendant pass through the traffic safety checkpoint? No. Okay. Um, Eastway was before the checkpoint? That's correct. Okay. Once you pulled uh, the defendant over on Eastway, tell the jury what you did. Uh, so Mr. Dawson came to a stop. Um, I got exited my vehicle and made contact with him on his driver's side window. Um, upon um, making contact with Mr. Dawson, I immediately detected the odor of marijuana emitting from the vehicle. Um, I asked him a series of questions. Um, I, one of the questions I had asked uh, if he had thrown something out the window. I believe that I had, uh, saw something exit his vehicle uh, as he was coming to a stop. So he was questioned in reference to that, uh, informing that I would be uh, going back to, to look down the street where I thought that item flew out the window, um, but I was unable to, to find something. Um, I asked him uh, if he had smoked. Um, and I believe his answer to that, he had smoked earlier in the night. Okay. Um, what did you do once you observed the defendant's appearance and after a series of questions, what was the next step? So in regards to his appearance, he did have uh, glossy bloodshot eyes and, and droopy eyelids. I actually, I requested Mr. Dotson to exit the vehicle to um, perform several field sobriety tests um, to ensure that he was safe to drive. Okay. Um, and if you would briefly explain to the jury what the uh, field sobriety exercises were, or how you phrase it, what did you do? Which, which ones did you do? HGN, uh, which is horizontal gaze nystagmus, um, walk and turn, uh, one leg stand, and lacking convergence. 
Okay. Yeah, let's break that down a little bit. What is the purpose of, I'm going to call it the horizontal gaze and status, that's HGN, correct? That's correct. What was the purpose of you uh, doing that exam? Um, to rule out any alcohol impairment or to determine if there was any sort of alcohol impairment uh, on board. So uh, alcohol is a uh, substance that is consistent uh, with HGN. Uh, it, it gives off. Uh, a person when under the influence of uh, alcohol or central nervous system depressant uh, will uh, exhibit HGN. Okay. Now, what is HGN? How is that exhibited during the exam? So HGN is an involuntary uh, jerking of the eyes when it moves side to side. Um, so that's how that's kind of explained. Okay. So can you tell the jury how you conducted the test for the exam? Yes, sir. So I explained um, that the tip of my finger is a stimulus. Uh, I request that Mr. Dotson to focus on my stimulus alone and not move his head whatsoever, just to follow it with his eyes only. Uh, hold that stimulus approximately 12 to 15 inches away from his face. Uh, and then I began uh, the pre-exam uh, of the portion, or the exam, um, which I'm trained to look for any medical rule outs. Um, if there's resting nystagmus, unequal pupil size, um, and unequal tracking. So those are things that we look for before the exam even begins. Uh, to ensure that he doesn't have any medical issues that would prohibit him from taking that exam. And did you do those things? In yes. Those particular instances? Yes. Sir. What signs or clues did Mr. Dotson exhibit on the H HGN specifically? So he exhibited uh, horizontal gaze and stagmus at maximum deviation, uh, onset prior to 45 degrees, and lack of smooth pursuit. Okay. In and both eyes on all of those exams. And what did that tell you, or what did that indicate to you? It indicated to me that he was uh, possibly under the influence of um, a substance. Uh, I hadn't determined at that point, you know, which substance it was, um, because there's several drugs that will exhibit uh, horizontal gaze and stagnus. Okay. And after you did the HGN, you said you also conducted another exam. Of I thought, was it the walking tour? That's correct. Okay, can you explain to the jury what that is and how it's conducted? So, Mr. Dotson is uh, given a set of instructions. Uh, those instructions are to uh, stand with his feet to get uh, feet. Uh, his, well, he's supposed to imagine a line right in front of him, uh, put his left uh, foot on that line, and put his right foot in front of his left heel to toe. Um, he's supposed to keep his arms down to his side and re remain in that position until I tell him to begin at which point I uh, instruct him of the, of the test uh, and um, asked him if he understands, to which Mr. Dotson said that he did understand. Uh, he's instructed to take nine heel toe steps forward, turn with a series of small steps, and take nine heel toe steps back. Um, he's instructed to uh, uh, watch his feet while walking, uh, to count his steps out loud, to uh, keep his arms down to his sides and not to stop until he completes the test. And did, did he conduct that test as you instructed? He showed uh, numerous signs and clues of impairment. Okay, can you tell the jury what those were, please? Yes, sir. Um, for uh, Your Honor, uh, may we approach? You may. Do you recall um, specifically is your testimony based entirely on your recollection of the use of the documents to refresh your memory? 
I've used other documents that were refreshed from my memory based on the amount of time that has elapsed. Okay. And it was one of those documents, the citation that was issued in this matter? Yes, sir. Okay. And that was a document. You've had that with you at, at uh, the witness stand to help refresh your memory? That's correct. Do you need that to help refresh your memory as to how you conducted and the results of the field sobriety exams? Yes, sir. Okay. Judge, I'd ask that. You need to be able to look at it, but you need to give it back to you. So yes, Your Honor. And I, again, I would simply I uh, like to reiterate my objection. The prosecutor is free to ask his witness any question he would like. The witness um, uh, is able to have the document to review while he is remembering the answer, and then he must give the document back pursuant to the rules of procedure of the Commonwealth of Kentucky. So, uh, Judge, if, if he wants me to ask a question, get the citation from him, then ask him if he remembers and hand it back to him, I'm happy to do that's that. What we, that. That's what we need to do. If, sure. Okay. Yeah. If we are to follow the rules. Yes, sir. Yes. I, I'm not objecting. If that's the way you want it done, I'll do it that way. Officer Salyer, is that your citation? It is, sir. Okay. Can you, and I think I was asking you, sir, if you could recall what the clues were that the defendant had exhibited on the walking turn. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, now, here, if you... You need to refresh and hand it back and answer. You can't read from the citation. Thank you, Mark. You're welcome. He failed to maintain his uh, starting position. He exhibited an incorrect number of steps. Uh, I think on his first set of uh, steps, um, or first set of nine, he, he went to 10, I believe, and um, he used his arms for balance. Okay. And uh, those were clues or signs of impairment? That's correct. Okay. And then the third test that you conducted, I believe you testified previously, was the uh, one leg stand? That's correct. Okay. Uh, do you need your citation to refresh your memory as to how that was conducted or the results? The results, yes, sir. Okay. You may hand me the citation. You may refresh his recollection, give you the citation back, and then answer He swayed while balancing. Um, he placed his foot down, uh, and I believe he had uh, stopped before uh, the test that was completed, and uh, he hopped. Okay. How long is he supposed to? How long is the defendant, was the defendant supposed to hold the one leg stand in place? Thirty seconds. Thirty seconds. And is he count out while he's doing it? Yes, sir, in a manner of 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, until told, told to stop. Okay. Now, while you were conducting these uh, field sobriety exams, was your body camera activated? Yes, sir. Okay. And if you would explain to the jury what the body cam is and where that's located on your person. Um, during this evening, it was located, uh, I believe, in my uh, right front pocket area uh, of my uniform shirt. Um, and it was facing outward. And that's a stationary camera? That's correct. Okay. Um, is that, uh, explain to the jury, how is that uh, video evidence maintained uh, once you've recorded it and logged it in? It's retained by our evidence custodian um, and evidence. We have our a locker room at the uh, Richmond Police, well, evidence room at the uh, Richmond Police Department that is maintained by our evidence custodian. And perhaps I ask a bad question. How do you physically get the video from your body cam into the evidence? So we place it onto a docking station at uh, the end of our shift every day, uh, and that downloads into a, an online server. Uh, we go into that server and download the video to a uh, USB flash drive and uh, that is in turn logged into evidence. Okay. Have you reviewed your body cam from this incident prior to today? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and, Your Honor, I'm going to ask him the witness to be positioned where he can review the body cam. I'm going to go through. Uh, the Any objection? Is, I'm trying to figure out where he can stand or sit. Uh, Coach, I, th I think he could probably stand next to the TV and the microphone at the bench would probably pick him up. The other option would be is having the city council table to see it, and the microphone on the council table will pick it up. Take my spot. That, that's fine. That'd probably be, okay. yeah. That way the view's not blocked if anybody in the jury. 
Okay. For the record, Your Honor, uh, the defense has no objection to the claim of the video. Okay. And you are, I guess you got to make a, are you making a motion to play the video at this time, Mr. Davis? I am. Okay. No objection, you said, from counsel, so we'll allow the uh, video to be played. <coughs> I think she's going to have to get Yeah, they got to pay it. Here we go. Let's get the video going. Okay. I'm just going to test it to see if we have audio. That's fine. Fingers with the call Okay. So, officer, just to orient the jury just a little bit. You see on the TV screen uh, the video from your body cam, is that correct? That's correct. Okay. And um, the information in the upper right-hand corner, can you explain to the jury what that is? Uh, it's the serial number of my body camera, uh, the date, which is um, inaccurate on my body camera, and uh, the time. Okay. Now, do you rec I know you said you've watched this before. Do you recognize what por portion or what part of your interaction with Mr. Dotson this uh, video represents? I believe this is when we start our field sobriety um, portion. Okay. Judge, I'm going to ask just to play this. I'm not playing the entire piece of that I've discussed with Mr. Foreman. I'm going to play the HGN and then I'm going to skip forward to the other uh, field sobriety teams. Just so. Okay. Any objection? Uh, uh, the prosecutor is entitled to put on the case that he wishes to put on, Your Honor. Okay. So, so I have no objection. So we'll allow you to play the parts of the video you wish, and obviously defense counsel can do the same. And, and Your Honor, while it's playing, I'm going to ask Officer Salyer to identify what is going on during the video. Now, to that, I will absolutely object, Your Honor, because the witness may not comment on the video. It's established Kentucky law on this issue that the video can only be well, if played... Well, if we're going to make an objection, let's do it at the bench, Judge. Okay. With the white man. I think what we need to do, Mr. Davis, is play the video in its entirety and then ask him questions as it relates to the video. I can do it that way, Judge. I was just trying to keep it sequentially as I want it. So in other words, if I play the HGN part, I want to come and stop it and ask him to comment on that. Hey, and you can stop the video, ask questions, right. and start the video again. But you can't—you can't testify as the video is playing or anything. Yeah, I'm not, okay. I'm not asking to do that. What I am asking to do is sequentially, so that I don't have to play it all and then go back to it. So I'm going to do the HGN and I'm going to walk and turn and so on and so forth. I mean, as long as as long as you play the portion you wish to play, and then it stopped, you can ask continue right. to ask questions, and you can then bring in other video. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Okay. Yeah.
Officer Sauer, you've watched the video portion that we've just played to the jury, correct? That's correct. Can you tell them what portion of the field uh, sobriety examination that was? HGM. Okay. And how was that being conducted by you as you were doing the HGM test? Sorry, sir, I don't, I don't understand the question. Well, uh, physically, how were you doing it? Because the jury obviously couldn't see the entire frame because of the frame of your picture. Explain to them what you were doing. Uh, my right finger was... Hey, your Honor, let me approach. Okay. Conducting the HGN test that night? As I was trained. Okay. And how was that physically done? Uh, I informed Mr. Dotson that the tip of my finger was a stimulus. I wanted him to follow that stimulus with his eyes only, not moving his head whatsoever. Okay. All right. All right. And then I'm going to show, if you bear with me, I'm going to fast forward. Instruction and the execution of the uh, walk and turn uh, field sobriety test. You had indicated in your previous testimony that the defendant clued uh, or gave signs of impairment on this walk and turn test. Can you describe what those were? Yes, sir. It was the uh, incorrect number of steps, uh, failure to maintain the starting position, I had to t instruct him to go back to it. Uh, and he used his arm for balance. He, he raised his arms more than six inches. Uh, to maintain his balance. Okay, thank you. Uh, when the instructor raised his foot, six is off the ground. Uh, or, yeah, yeah, foot of your choosing. Uh, raise uh, either foot, six inches off the ground, foot more down, foot parallel to the ground. Uh, and we'll look like this. And you'll count 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, and the total stops. We'll look like this, okay? 1,001, 1,002. Thank you. 
Same questions I asked you with regard to the two previous uh, exams. Can you tell the jury what was being uh, done in that video? Yes, sir. It was the uh, the one leg stand uh, field sobriety test. It was the instruction phase that I gave Mr. Thompson, as well as his execution of it. Okay. And were, again, were there clues that were exhibited, clues of impairment or signs of impairment uh, during that test? There was. And what were those? Um, he used his arms for balance, he hopped, uh, placed his foot down, and uh, I would like to, can I refer back to my citation, sir? Oh, is that okay, Judge, for showing the citation? He, he may refer to his citation for refresh his recollection. And he swayed while balancing. Now, was that the entirety of the field sobriety exams that you administered that night? Yes, sir. Uh, in the beginning of the uh, HEN, there was also the uh, lack of divergence exam as well. Okay, can you explain to the jury what that is, please? Uh, much like the HGN uh, exam, he's, he has a stimulus place uh, in front of his um, face, uh, approximately 12 to 15 inches. Um, during this exam, uh, the stimulus moves in a circular uh, pattern uh, and comes in close to the bridge of his nose. Um, that would, uh, if his eyes converge properly and stay converged and not float back up uh, like we are, we're trained to look for, um, then it's, it's normal. Uh, however, Mr. Dotson's eyes, both eyes, uh, uh, did not converge properly. Um, that's something that you see with cannabis impairment and um, central nervous system depressant, which alcohol falls in that category. Okay. Uh, so tell the jury what, after you conducted these field sobriety tests, what did you do next? I asked Mr. Dawson to step to the rear of my vehicle uh, for a preliminary breath test. Okay. At some, at some point in time during that chain of events, did you make the determination that you were going to place him uh, under arrest? Yes, sir. Okay. And did you place him under arrest? I did. Okay. And what was he charged with or planned to be charged with at the time you placed him under arrest? It was uh, operating motor vehicle under the influence, first offense, uh, improper turn uh, signal, uh, careless driving, and uh, that was that. That was it to that point um, until I'd searched his view. Okay. After he was placed uh, under arrest, did you search the vehicle? I did. And what did you discover when you searched his vehicle? Uh, while searching the vehicle, I uh, located in numerous areas of his vehicle that there was uh, marijuana residue. Uh, so basically, uh, small parts of the, uh, the marijuana plant uh, scattered about uh, his uh, central console area, uh, mainly. Um, and then there was a Wendy's uh, cup that was a uh, brought to my attention that I had alcoholic beverage, or it smelled like an alcoholic beverage, uh, to which Mr. Uh, Dotson later says that he was sipping on it. Where was that Wendy's cup located? It was, um, if I recall correctly, it was in the front uh, uh, center console area. Where there's a cup holder there, I believe. Did you examine that Wendy's cup and see if it had alcoholic beverage in it? Uh, yes, sir. I opened uh, the lid and I also smelled uh, the odor of alcohol beverage. Okay. After you uh, placed Mr. Uh, Dotson in custody, did you transport him to Baptist Hospital in Richmond for a blood draw? Yes, I did. Okay. And just briefly tell the jury how that works and, and what you did uh, once you got into the hospital. So upon arriving at the hospital, um, we take them back to a, a triage room um, where a, a phlebotomist or medical technician, technologist, uh, whoever's qualified to, to take the subject's blood, they'll enter into the room. Um, however, upon 
um, our entry, uh, I advise him of his uh, implied consent um, and give him an allotted 10 minutes to contact and communicate with the attorney. I believe Mr. Johnson refused to do so. Uh, I still gave him the allotted 10 minutes um, just in case he changed his mind. And um, at the, the conclusion of that, I requested a sample of his blood, which he submitted to it. Okay. And that blood was drawn and placed in a evidence kit? Uh, that's correct. There's a KSP blood test kits that we, we uh, often use for DUIs uh, when we believe that there's uh, drug impairment involved. Uh, and that's one of the kits that we're used. Okay. And what did you do with, once, with that kit once the blood was drawn and placed in it? Um, after it's drawn and, and placed in it, Mr. Dotson is uh, taken to Mass County Tent Center. Uh, that kit is then in turn logged into evidence at the original police department. Okay. Well, I believe that's all the questions I have for Officer Southern. Council. You want him back at the yeah, table? Yeah. Yeah. I, I thought you were going to put more video, that's why. That, I did too. That's yeah, what I, I almost stopped you and asked him. Oh, I'm sorry. Right. I thought you said, but I'm like, okay, you're talking about the hospital. Yeah. I, yeah, I thought maybe they were going to play something. So. No, so. I, I kind of was going to let him sit here if you were going to play video, but I'll let you do what you're going to do on cross. If you have a seat, officer. And uh, Officer Southern, you want video? Yeah, I'll take it. or um, schools that will host different trainings. Um, they host some training. Um, however, we can receive training outside of DOCJT. Correct. So the, you, once you're a law enforcement officer, you are no longer, if I may, at the mercy of DOCJT's curriculum. You can go to California and take a course there if you wish, right? That's correct. Okay. 
Um, and a lot of these classes are mandatory, right? We have some mandatory training periodically that you as a law enforcement officer have to complete every few months, every few years. That's correct. Right? And then there's some optional courses that you can take at your election, whatever uh, strikes your fancy, whatever you feel that your command may be needing and so on. That's correct. Uh, our department also will um, require us to go uh, have a certain training. Um, sometimes we have a decision that, um, but not always. But you're correct. Okay. So, um, like I said, almost a year later to the day, according to your transcript from DOCJT, you completed the Advanced Roadside Impaired Driving Enforcement, as we call it A Ride course. That's correct. Correct. And that is a 16-hour supplemental course. Well, let, let me go back. So at the DOCJT um, Police Academy that you completed in September of 2017, um, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, my lingo, but I've heard that it being called this. Uh, there's a specific week, because you said it's a 23-week course, right? That's correct. And one of those weeks in the 23 weeks is devoted to standardized field sobriety testing and uh, roadside impairment detection and enforcement. That's correct. Right? And they call it DY week. Have you ever heard that term? I have. Okay. That's, that's the unofficial title. That's the, the way the new boys and girls over at the academy kind of call it, right? Just to make it sound like the DUI week, right? That's correct. Okay. And that is a 40-hour course that goes all the way through explaining uh, the, the uh, effects of alcohol on the body, the effects of, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, the how to administer field sobriety tests, right? That's correct. How to look for clues, what are the clues, right? That's correct. And at the end of that, you even have a little um, clinic or lab, if you will, where they bring in individuals who are doused with various levels of alcohol, and you get to conduct an investigation uh, under a controlled environment. That's correct. So that is... The, those 40 hours that week is alcohol and alcohol only, correct? I do believe that they do, um, you know, hit on several drug things, but if you're referring to like the field sobriety and uh, the wet lab, as they call it, uh, that was mainly um, poised towards the um, alcohol impairment. But there was some drug um, in the classroom setting of it. Uh, to my knowledge. Okay. Now, allow me to rephrase the question. I think you already hit on it, but just for clarification for the jury. In that DUI week, you did not uh, receive <coughs> any training on any field sobriety tests on other than the three standardized field sobriety tests for alcohol, which are the HGN, the walk and turn, and the lung game, correct? That's correct. Okay. Now, uh, let's come back to a year later, you go to, uh, I don't know what agency, I don't think it's really relevant for our purposes, but you decide, or your higher-ups, your sergeant, lieutenant, captain, chief, whoever, uh, or you yourself decide that you want, you're going to be doing the A-Ride training, correct? That's correct. And the A-Ride training is a supplemental 60-hour course uh, that goes a, a little bit deeper. I, I believe they revisit the three standardized tests. So you have a little bit of a refresher, right? Yes, we, we have to be proficient in our field sobriety exams, um, I believe, the first day, or else we're not able to um, partake further in the class. You, you have to pass it to, in order to go further, uh, and I believe that's on the first day. And ARI looks at impairment by marijuana. Among other drugs, yes, sir. Among other drugs as well? Yes, sir. There's seven drug categories. Uh, cannabis is one of those. Okay. 
at ALI, the 16 hours that you completed in September of 2018, now a year before this incident, um, you were taught how to conduct two additional field sobriety tests that test for drugs, correct? Uh, three, sir. Three. That's correct. The modified Lomberg test? Yes, sir. The lack of convergence test? Yes, sir. What is the third one? Finger to nose test, yes, sir. Finger to nose. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I haven't really changed the curriculum. They used to not be in it in years past. Okay. The finger to nose is also... Okay. Um, so those three, the finger to nose, the lack of convergence, and the modified Lomberg, you were taught how to administer those tests. That's correct. At the AY training in, that you finished in September of 2018. That's correct. And that was one year before uh, you have stopped Mr. Dotson. Yes, sir, give or take, I would, I would say. Would it refresh your recollection if I showed you your curriculum? Uh, I'm sorry, not your curriculum, your, uh, what, what would you call that? It's just, it certainly, it's, it, I can't think of the word. It, it's like the, the college thing where they, where they show you your credits, I guess. Um, would it refresh your recollection if I showed you your, a copy of your training? Uh, the credits that you have completed from the OCJT? As far as the exact date, yes, sir. Yeah, because I, I just want to make sure we have the exact dates right for the jury. If I may approach the witness, sir. As you see, they're organized. I don't know if we have the most updated version. I know it ends in uh, December 13, 2021, but for our purposes, it is complete because it encompasses all your training and experience prior to uh, Mr. Dotson's arrest. And it also uh, goes all the way up to the arrest, right? That's correct. Would you agree that this is an accurate representation of all the courses that you've taken up until December uh, 13, 2021? Yes, sir. Is there anything missing or that you've completed that's not on there? Um, there's some that do not count towards uh, a credit, um, but I, I would have more training than what's listed here. Um, one of those being uh, a read interview and interrogation technique, um, and that would, would have happened in 2020. I don't see that listed here. I'm sorry, let me rephrase the question. Do, is there anything on that uh, curriculum that you've completed over the years as it relates to standardized field sobriety testing? Uh, DUI detection and enforcement that's not listed on that sheet? No, sir, it's all here. It's not okay, because again, in the interest of time, I don't want to. Uh, I'm sure you've completed way more than, than it's on here, but for, purpose, for our purposes, this is, this is a complete um, credit assessment that you've completed in your career as a law enforcement agent when it comes to DUI detection and enforcement and standardized field sobriety testing. Yes, sir. Perfect. Okay. Um, so as you see on there, uh, September 21st, September 20th and 21st of 2018, that's the fourth line from the bottom, advanced roadside uh, impaired driving enforcement, um, training dates 9-20-18 and 9-21-18. Does that sound accurate? Yes, sir. And the date of arrest for and the date of stop and arrest for Mr. Dotson is September 28th the following year. That's correct. About a year, you know, a week later, correct? That's correct. Now, you also testified that you completed the drug recognition expert training, correct? That's correct. Now, that training, and I'm looking again at your uh, training history, that training did not come until November 13th 
through November 21st of 2019, correct? That's correct. And you have the, what they call a preschool. It's not a literal preschool. It's just a term that they use for kind of like an introductory course to the, the DRE, correct? Yes, sir. That's and correct. that one is, I'm sorry? That's correct. That's correct. Uh, and that is 16 hours? That's correct. Okay. That's the preschool. So the preschool, you also did not start until November 11th through November the 12th of 2019, correct? Yes, sir. So at the time of Mr. Dotson's stop and arrest, you were not yet DRE certified. That's correct. You only had the 40 hours of training at the DOCJT. And you had the 16 hours of a run. That's correct. And they were all, it just so magically happens, almost exactly a year apart from one another. I'm talking about DOCJT training, and you have one year later you have a ride, and one year later we have the stop and arrest of Mr. Dotson. Is that, that correct? That's correct. Okay. If I may approach you, please. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, a portion of your training, both at A Ride and the DOCJT, let's call it your collective training for purposes of this trial with respect to DUI detection, enforcement, standardized field sobriety testing, etc prior to arresting Mr. Dotson. In your training, in your collective training, um, one of the things you're taught is how to write citations, right? Yes, sir. Uh, we receive training from our field training officers. Uh, after getting out of the academy, we're assigned to a field training officer. My field training was 12 weeks outside of the training that I received in the academy. And then there is certain sections within uh, the uh, DOCJT that will uh, aid and assist us with the citations. Or they'll require us to submit a citation for an assignment or something like that. Because that's part of your job as a law enforcement agent, right? That's correct. Because citations memorialize what happened for later use, right? Yes, sir, among the other things. They're supposed to be accurate, right? Yes, sir. Complete? Yes, sir. Truthful? Yes, sir. Right? Because if they are lacking, let's say, in detail or there's something amiss with the citation, and like in this case, I think it's a classic example, right? We had an entire pandemic that came in the middle of this, in this case, right? This happened in September of 2019. Here we are, June of 22, two and a half, more than two and a half, almost three years removed from the date of arrest, right? That's correct. And you've relied on your citation and your testimony here today. That's correct. Because it's important. You've been relying on it. The prosecutor has been relying on it. Right? That's correct. I'm relying on it. Right? Yes, sir. The jury's going to rely on your testimony based on your review, right? Yes. I think we can, we can approach. Okay. Approach. No, he should base your testimony based off of lying. He, he, no, the last thing, at first I thought the same thing that he said we're lying on. So, yeah, that's, no, no, unless, yeah. Because the jury would be relying on the citation as well, right? At one point. Yes. I, I guess that's what he said. The jury, okay, let's, 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 let's yeah, let's approach it. Uh, they're relying off of the side. So you, you just I'll yeah, rephrase. A rephrase. I'll I'll rephrase. Rephrase. Get that. The, the, I'm sorry. The the jury will be relying on your testimony based on the citation, correct? 
That's correct. My apologies. Sir. Yeah, you're fine. Um, you did not complete any supplemental reports to this case other than the citation? No, sir. And we have a video recording of this case, as we've seen, correct? That's correct. Need to have a seat back over to see the video now? Yes, I think so. Your okay. Honor. And Your Honor, uh, I'm going to start the video at the beginning uh, of the basically the video that we've been provided to. From the start. We're going to start from zero zero. Okay. Is it working? Not yet. Is there anything There's nothing on the screen. I no, no. I want no signal. My monitor says no signal also. Switched it off from Mr. Davis over to. Uh, yeah. Okay. Just making sure that was the last one on. I didn't know if this connection. Is Mr. Davis coming on? Is yours? Okay. Okay. It's no, this is technology. Yeah. yeah. See the green here. I'm just trying to self diagnose from up here. <laughs> and I check the connections down here too, and they're all in. And it worked yeah, uh, 30 or an hour ago. No, it's great. It's simple enough on Mr. Davis's. No. See, that's on his end. It's pulled up on that one. There it is. There it is. That's exactly what it was. Well, I, I duplicated the screen. I have an option to do that. It, I was afraid to touch it because it was working before. Okay. But at the suggestion of my associate, I was like, all right, we'll give it a roll. So, um, 
So we're good to go. We're still recording. You may proceed, Council. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, so, Deputy me, Officer Sellier, you um, had a functional body camera video on the night of your stop and arrest of Mr. Dodson on September 28th, 2019. That's correct. And you've had a chance to review this video prior to coming to the forward today? That's correct. Sound or no sound? Sounds cut off for the first.
shots. Keep that position without taking them, okay? Okay. Uh, go back. There you go. Um, one instructed, take nine or those steps forward, turn with the series of small steps, and take nine or those steps back. Keep your hand up the uh, It's going to look like this, okay? So, right left foot's on line, right foot's in front of your left, you go one, two, three, but you continue on line. You go right and around, series of small steps. One, two, three. But you continue on line, okay? Uh, well, I'll walk in here. While walking, keep your arms at your sides, watch your feet at all times, count your steps out loud. When walking, don't stop until you complete the test. Do you understand? So, okay, again, you have your first step, step from the middle toes. One, two, three, four.
the events that transpired on September 28, 2019 between you and Mr. Dawson? I believe so. in the cup. I, I had no plans on collecting it. Um, it's not our um, common procedure or policy that we do collect those at the Richmond Police Department. So um, I smelled what I believe to be the odor of an alcoholic beverage and based on Mr. Dotson's statements as well. Uh, and I poured it out. Yes, sir. Are you aware that destruction of evidence is a Class D felony in Kentucky, carrying up to five years in prison and a ten thousand dollar fine? Yes, sir. Um. Talk about the marijuana. Um, you searched the vehicle and you did not find any marijuana, otherwise, you would have charged Mr. Dotson with possession of marijuana, right? That's correct. was the lactic convergence test followed by the HGN test. Oh, the first test we did was the lactic convergence. That's correct. Um, and then you can hear in the body camera footage when I uh, distinctly say to him, now we'll go left to right. Um, the other one was a circular pattern around his face. The lack of convergence uh, test you learned at the 
a ride training in September of 2018, correct? Yes, sir. The lack of convergence uh, field sobriety test, much like the other, well, you know, total six at least, I'm not even going to go into the PRE, which has, I believe, 11 steps of its own, but because you are not a DRE drug recognition expert at the moment of the arrest of Mr. Dotson, you knew a total of six field sobriety tests. That's correct. Three for alcohol and three for drugs. That's correct. They each have a, and I believe we saw in the video you were reading from part on the, the walk and turn and the one that stand, because they have a standardized set of instructions, right? That's correct. And the lack of convergence, the modified Romberg, and the uh, finger to nose, they also have a specified set of instructions, right? Yes. Sir. And the instruction from the uh, A ride manual when it comes to lack of convergence, and please stop me in a moment if I'm incorrect. Administration of the LOC, the lack of convergence. Instructional stage. Inform the subject that you will be moving the stimulus around in a circle and will be moving it toward the bridge of the nose. In addition, inform the subject that you will not actually touch the nose with the stimulus. This notice is important so the individual will not move their head away. End quote. Does that language ring any bell at all? It does, sir. Yes, sir. That's how you were trained, right? That's correct. You didn't do it in this case. No, sir. And you also testified that you had not one, but two additional tests for the drug impairment recognition as part of your A-Ride training a year out of the academy. That's the uh, finger to nose and the modified ROM. That's right? Right. When they're supposed to kind of stand with their head leaning back and estimate 30, the passage of 30 seconds in their head. That's correct. Right? You did not administer either the modified Romberg or the finger to nose tests to Mr. Dotson in this case. I did not. With respect to the horizontal gaze and stagnus, um, if you don't mind my asking, uh, prior to the academy, were you, um, did you have any other profession of any kind, or were you in, in another trade, or did you go straight from education into the academy? No, sir, I was a, uh, a welder slash factory worker. Uh, did you receive any type of medical training? No, sir. Any type of, um, you did not receive training as an ophthalmologist or an optometrist? No. Uh, did you ever study the human eye or its function? No. Are you aware that there are other causes of nystagmus other than alcohol? Other causes of nystagmus, yes. Horizontal gaze nystagmus is most associated with uh, impairment. Allow me to rephrase. Um, let me ask you. Nystagmus is defined in the manual as an involuntary jerking of the eye. Right? That's correct. Now, there are ways, let's say, um, if you're sitting in a train and you would be watching posts as they pass by and you're trying to focus on each one individually, that would create nystagmus, like an artificially triggered, manually triggered nystagmus, right? That's correct. Because if you were to take the individual immediately after they're sitting in the train and those posts keep passing by, for example, um, and you were to take them and conduct the HGM test, you would see clues of nystagmus, right? 
not if they followed instructions and focused on the stimulus. They would not. Do you remember from your training that there are other causes of nystagmus that are completely unrelated to alcohol, such as caffeine, they could be hereditary, uh, high blood pressure could cause naturally occurring nystagmus? There is other forms of nystagmus, yes sir. I'm sorry, can you please explain what is another form of nystagmus today? Or other causes of nystagmus, uh, rather. Um, that's what I meant to say. Okay, so it's not just alcohol, right? Do you remember that in your training? That's correct. They, 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 do you remember them telling you that nystagmus could be a false positive? You could have a, 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 an individual who exhibits clues, two or four or six clues, and they have nothing to do with alcohol. Well, drugs, uh, some drugs can also cause nystagmus, sir. And, and you don't no, remember the, the caffeine and, and hereditary and high blood pressure speech? I'm not familiar with the, uh, the caffeine. Caffeine is a stimulant. Stimulants do not cause, um, you know, nystagmus. Um, no, sir. Okay. Um, are you aware, and this is, I'm jumping ahead a little bit, because since you are at DRE, now this is after the fact, this is after the arrest, you remember that um, they gave you a little cheat sheet card that you use, you may remember it, it's got like little people sizes at the top and all the drug categories, and marijuana is listed on there, and it has, um, it, it, it it goes through the field sobriety tests. And one of the things that they teach you at the DRE school is that marijuana, if an individual is under the influence of marijuana, they would not exhibit signs of HGN. Do you remember that? That's correct. And we could not see Mr. Dotson's eyes on camera when you conducted the HGN, could we? No, sir. I think I, I have a quote here from your testimony on direct. That I believe you actually even said, quote, we use these, these tests to show if an individual could possibly be under the influence of something. Do you remember saying that? That's correct. Because it's not an exact certain science, right? I, th I think it's the totality of the circumstances, sir. The totality of the circumstances. You have to look at the case as a whole, not just let's look at this test in the vacuum, let's look at this test in the vacuum, let's look at this test in the vacuum, right? That's correct. You look at the whole thing as, as one giant amorphous blob of information and then make a determination of whether or not you have a probable cause to arrest, correct? That's correct. Okay. Even in the academy, if you recall, they even tell you, they teach you in the manual. The manual is very thick. It's like 600 pages. Do you remember that thing? It's very thick, sir. It's extremely thick. So, um, if you remember, when they taught you, this is, we're going to the original DUI week now, okay? During the 20, 23 weeks that we completed at DOCJP, the academy. Um, one of the things that they taught you there is that, because like we said, it's not an exact science and they teach you that, they, they taught you that the HGN is only 75% reliable. Do you remember that? I knew that there's a percentage attached to that, yes, sir. Uh, the walk and turn is only 66% reliable? Yes, sir. And the one leg stand is only 69% reliable? I think there's different validation studies that show different percentages. Uh, California, Colorado, um, and those percentages, I believe, in those studies were higher. But the, the percentages of them all being reliable, if they all show clues, uh, I think was 92% uh, around that or so. 
So one out of ten times collectively, your assessment is wrong. My assessment? You just said 92% collectively. I've never heard that figure before. I'm going off of your, if you, based on your figure, okay, let's take your figure. I've, I've never heard it before in my life, but let's, let's assume it for a second. If you have 10 individuals, right, and you give a test to every single one of them, based on your number, one of them, you would say, yes, I believe that individual is under the influence, and you would be wrong. That is a false positive, correct? It's what the validation study showed, sir. That's not my assessment. I'm um, talking simple statistics. Based on those statistics that in those studies, yes, you're correct. And individually, the HGN test by itself is a 75% reliability. One out of four individuals that you administer the HGN test to, again, you would be wrong and it would be a false positive, correct? I don't know if there, there would be a false positive uh, with HGN. It's either an individual has HGN or they don't. Uh, I'm going based on the validation studies. They're not saying that HGN is 100% effective. They're saying it's 75% reliable, correct? In the determining uh, individuals. Oh, right? So if you were to take four people, that's 25% each. Three people who would do the HGN on you would be correct. And one out of four people that you would give the test to, that's the other missing 25% piece of the puzzle, right? If it is like a circle of like four quarters, there's one quarter missing, that's the person that's called a false positive, right? You're wrong about that one. You will assess them as being impaired, but your assessment is wrong according to the validation studies. According to those studies, yes, sir. Thank you. That was, that was my question. Uh, I noticed, and I know, it's been two and a half years, it's been a long time, but um, during direct examination there were a couple of portions of your testimony that you could not remember the exact uh, clues that Mr. Dotson exhibited and you asked the prosecutor to refresh your recollection and he came up, gave you a piece of paper, the citation you drafted to refresh your memory, so you, you don't have a full memory independently of the video and the citation of this case, it seems like. Am I correct? That's correct. You've forgotten a lot of details? I would say they're fuzzy. Yes, sir. In your citation, You've stated, uh, quote, while searching the vehicle, I located marijuana residue, end quote. Do you remember that? Yes, sir. Did you take a uh, evidence baggie and collect that residue for the preservation of evidence? No. I just observed it and documented it in my probable cause document. It was a very small amount, um, and I'm not sure I could collect, collected um, a certain amount of that. Like I said, it was just residue. This video is uh, over an hour long. It's about an hour and ten minutes, hour and nine minutes, I think. And there's a lot of dead air, right, when there's, you're just sitting around waiting for a nurse or when you're driving to the hospital, right? Um, there's a moment 
and I want to ask you something. It was right here, right after the administration of the PDT, the preliminary breath test, the test for alcohol, uh, to Mr. Dotson. The moments right after that. So if we could watch the video first, and then I have a few questions for you. Yes, sir. Mr. Dotson. 
Uh, I believe uh, we see Mr. Dotson seated in a, in a chair inside the little hospital room. That's correct. And you are standing at the end of the room with your body camera turned on. That's correct. Is the body camera still on your person, or did you take it off and set it down? At this point, it's detached from my body facing uh, Mr. Dotson. I believe I was preparing the citation at the time, and I wanted the body camera to document uh, Mr. Dotson and the, uh, the blood exam while I worked on my paperwork. And over in the corner, in the uh, what looks like turquoise scrubs and a white coat with blue gloves, we see uh, the phlebotomist that is about to extract the blood from Mr. Dotson. That's correct. And in your possession, as we will see in a few moments, is a, is a little box, a little kit, if you will, from the Kentucky State Police that contains three vials uh, that can be filled with blood and then sent that's correct.
Your Honor, at this time, the defense would like to uh, move to admit the video portions that we would play in the evidence. Any objections? That's fine, Your Honor. I, I think if they're played into the record, they're admitted. Yeah, I'm, I'm good on your side. You did move to admit. He didn't object. So just for record purposes, I'll show the videos. For uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah, I have no objection. I, yeah. I guess I should hey. have moved mine in too, but my, my feeling is if they're played into that computer system, they're part of the record, but no. right, that's fine. Four hours. Admitted. Thank you, Ron. Uh, just one uh, final question, Officer Sellier. On the night of September 28, 2019, when you were sitting at the intersection of the gas station, right? At the very beginning of your testimony, I think the, the first words out of your mouth after you talked about your training and experience is you were seated. And I, I apologize, I'm not from Richmond, so I, I don't uh, know your roads. It's like Lancaster, right? And. Barnesville, yes, sir. Right. So when you're there, uh, you stated, you testified on direct examination that you saw Mr. Dotson uh, almost hit another vehicle. Is that what it was? Yes, sir. There was a near collision at that intersection. Uh, Mr. Dotson had uh, made an abrupt lane change. He was in the left lane. Uh, he made an abrupt lane change into the right lane. Uh, did that so without signaling um, and almost hit the vehicle that was in the left lane that had been traveling in the left lane. And was that vehicle traveling in the same direction as Mr. Dotson? That's correct, yes sir. So they were also headed towards a checkpoint? That's correct. Did you make any efforts to radio in the checkpoint to get the names make model information of the vehicle that Mr. Dodson allegedly nearly struck? No. Other no questions, Your Honor? Counsel, is that raising questions? It raises a couple for me, Your Honor. I'll try to be brief. Um, Officer Sager, let, let's address something. So, uh, Mr. Foreman had asked you about there were a couple of occasions where you muted your body cam but you didn't explain why you did that or what the context of that was. Can you tell the jury why the body cam was muted for certain portions? Yes, sir. When I mute my body camera, uh, and in the instances that you've seen on camera here, it's when I was communicating with another officer, directing him to do something, uh, or asking him a question or just general conversation. It was for um, officer con consultation with another officer. Okay. None of those times were when you were interacting with the defendant, Mr. Dotson, correct? Yes, sir, to, to my knowledge. Okay. Now, uh, Mr. Foreman had asked you a series of questions about, well, the, the HGN it gives a false positive this percentage of the time, and the walk and turn is effective this percentage of the time. You recall that? That's correct. Do you rely on just one of those? Uh, field sobriety exams to make your determination of impairment? No, sir. Like I, I mentioned before, it's based on the totality of the circumstances. Okay. And in this particular case, can you tell the jury what that totality of the circumstances was that you determined that Mr. Dotson was under some type of impairment that night? Yes, sir. So it's it's based off of uh, the vehicle's uh, the vehicle motion while he's operating the vehicle. Uh, he fails to make a, a, a lane change or a signal for a lane change, um, and then he almost rear-ends another vehicle. Um, upon contact with him, you have the odor of marijuana emitting from the vehicle. Um, you had uh, glossy bloodshot eyes of Mr. Uh, Dotson. Uh, he exhibited third speech. Uh, he had made admissions uh, to consuming alcoholic beverages and to uh, partaking in uh, cannabis. Um, as well as the uh, standard by, standardized field sobriety tests uh, that he exhibited multiple clues uh, and even all six clues on HGN. Um, so it's, it's based off the totality of the circumstances. You have an open container in uh, Mr. Dotson's vehicle where he is actually taking, 
taken a, an alcoholic beverage and poured it into a Wendy, Wendy's cup uh, so he could sip on it. Your Honor, uh, I would object to speculation at this point. The officer is speculating as to the events of how the alcohol ended up in the uh, alleged Wendy's cup. I'll sustain it for that purpose. Okay. You have a, a Wendy's cup with alcohol in Mr. Uh, Dotson's vehicle uh, placed uh, where Mr. Dotson would be sitting. Um, and then you have uh, his admissions and uh, the PBT showing the presence of alcohol in his breath. And so all that in the totality of the circumstances, which leads me to believe uh, that he was under the influence on September 28, 2019. Do either one of our windows located here originally sell alcohol? No, sir. Okay. Um, now, Mr. Foreman also asked you about, um, I think he asked you, he said, uh, the horizontal gaze nystagmus test would not give a clue as to marijuana. Did he ask you that? I believe so. Okay. And how did you respond to that? I don't recall. Uh, cannabis, uh, marijuana being part of the cannabis drug category does not show HDM. That's okay. correct. So the, in, what is the field sobriety exam that you did that would give you an indication of marijuana? Lack of convergence. Okay. And that was present on Mr. Dotson on that night when you conducted that exam, correct? That's correct. And you didn't rely just on that lack of convergence to determine that he was, in your opinion, impaired with marijuana. You did other investigation, correct? That's correct. And can you tell the jury what other factors led you to believe that he had an impairment from marijuana? So with marijuana, uh, one of the main uh, signs and symptoms that you look for is the, uh, the bloodshot eyes. Uh, somebody that has partaken in, in cannabis uh, will have the bloodshot eyes sometimes they'll appear to be glossy um, and he, he did have that as well uh, and then you have the odor of the uh, the marijuana admitted from this vehicle as well as his statements okay. um, now mr foreman also asked you um, about committing i think he said committing the offense of destruction of evidence can you tell the jury what the policy is of your department as it relates to the retention of alcohol in this type of an arrest? Normally we just notate it um, and we don't collect uh, liquids that could leak into our evidence room or anything like that. Um, it's my, been my common procedure uh, to notate it and then pour that substance out so it could not be used by anybody else uh, while driving or anything like that. So it's not something that um, I know of anyone uh, collecting something like that in a Wendy's cup that could leak out into our evidence room. Um, it's not something that we could collect. And you, if I remember the video correctly, you poured out the alcohol in the Wendy's cup before you let uh, the other passenger leave in the truck. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Now, if I could just have a moment. Yeah, no, that's all. Thank you, Mr. Foreman. Is that raising that? Just two, Your Honor. You may proceed. Officer Sellier is the only cause of bloodshot eyes, marijuana, cannabis. No. Other <coughs> causes of bloodshot eyes too. Yes. Sir. And when you stated that. It is your department policy to dispose of alcohol containers. Are you testifying here today that your department's policy is above Kentucky law? It certainly is. I'm, I'm, I'm going to object to that. Thank you.
this in your life. Who do you want to be? Can you be heard? Yeah, I'm called. Where are you called? That, that is a question that you have to make and prejudice the journey. That's all that is. It's not a journey. And Your Honor, just because there's been a consistent violation of the law doesn't mean that it's not a violation. I don't think it's a violation. It's not a violation. Due to an event at the camp. If it's if it's their policy, which it has been here for 20 years, I've been practicing here. They never bring a cup of alcohol into court or anything. I'm going to I'm gonna sustain. We've already. He didn't object during the first part. He came in, so I'm going to sustain the objection now. Thank you. Yeah. Can we, um, just in the interest, if nothing but an intellectual exercise, to pull up the Kentucky Revised Standard on destruction of evidence? The officer, here's the deal. I sustain the objection of the officer is not going to try. Okay. Okay. I'll move on. Okay. Actually, I'm sorry. Those are the little questions I have. Okay. Any other questions? No. You may step down. At this time, before another witness is called, it's probably a good time. Y'all like a bathroom break, stretch your legs. Okay. Let's take a... 15-minute recess. Uh, we'll be back in here at 3.15.